mm. my well the the way it is yeah the the bit like the super interchangeability yeah. so I think there'd be a nuance to find there in the mm. middle but yeah um, good idea that one I think this one I'm not so sure on it's number yeah. four it's Yorkshire versus Lancashire. People say we can't fit this in. Well, I am here to tell you how we can. We play it at the end of season, so how the team are made up is England pick the squad for its international tournament, then you pick the players that didn't get picked for England. This could bring in players to a higher level that wouldn't get the chance of international if the international players were available. There's always a surprise exclusion from the England squad that has a point to prove as well. Like to know what you think about my ideas. Thanks for the podcast. I actually don't mind that. It's only a it's only a different version of of a knights fixture, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It's only a different version of that, and it encompasses and it I allows more players the, to get I, the experience. Away. The problem is, is because it's not your top echelon English players playing in it. Yeah, I don't know how much of a draw that then becomes. So it never gained the traction to be yeah a major thing. So it could always be just. Yeah, and that was the problem with Yorkshire Lancashire towards the end of its life. And was replaced with a, an, an, a, another Knights fixture. I, I would prefer to have the England Knights playing fixtures against the up and coming nations. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the Canadas, Jamaicas, and. And the Serbias, and, and New yeah, Zealand. There's, there's, there's a uh, plethora sorry, of the, players they can be. You know, USA and, and those sorts of countries. Yeah. Um, Jamaica got battered, didn't they, by a. Makeshift Canada side in the yeah in the America's Cup. So I'm not uh, sure how many Jamaican players. None of them were on. Like is, is, it's so there? strange as well. They, they weren't because there's some there's, Jamaica have quite a few English based players I don't know how many of those will have got released and stuff. Well, one of them was scoring five tries for you, weren't yeah. it? So Jamaican international Omari Kara. Yeah. 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 So maybe that's not necessarily a great reflection of where those two teams maybe, are maybe the all. Canadians just have a, a better depth in sailing abilities than the Jamaicans have I don't know what you're saying in the America's Cup oh of course thank you um, very good ok yeah but good thanks for that email Scott yeah that's that awesome one. Um, this one I don't know if you're going to enjoy as much Tom it's from FC hashtag yeah mate <laughs> um, at Langers 38 Rich Langley otherwise known as settle an argument for me what are the odds of Bradford being in Super League in 2017? I'm saying way more than 200 to 1. I don't, think Langers, I don't think it was way more than 200 to 1. I would say it was probably around about the 80 to 100 to 1 mark. If you think that from where Bradford are to what has to happen for them to get in the Super League, if that situation plays out 100 times, yeah. you've got to think that one out of those 100 times the stars would align to allow them to come up. Yeah, I would think so. Well, you, well if you think about it, Bradford probably only have to win five games before the end of the season as long as one of them's next week and one of them's a million pound game yeah that's it they could finish fifth conceivably I, honestly, three wins look, they? I'm not looking any further ahead than Featherstone at the minute because it's, it's a fool's errand and everyone was getting really fucking giddy on social media yesterday we'll talk more about that in a few minutes though I'm sure ok hat at just davies 90 so yes gave Super League pod a first listen very good informative and cast a wide net around the league world fantastic that's, that's nice to hear thanks hat we had another one um, that came in today and it missed the rundown so I'm sorry they didn't make it right. um, but we had another tweet from another person who was a first time first time listener so keep getting in touch yeah. I think he's, I think the chap's name was Andy off the top of my head well there you go good stuff We've got some more from Langers. Yes. Um, we have a query. He says, stat query for Mark. What th- this is a, a, tr- a trio of Langers, isn't it, in this um, Yeah, mate. Stat query for Mark. What's the SL record for conser- conversion percentage and is Snade anywhere near it? Hashtag Deadeye, hashtag not Pat Richards. So what did we decide? Well. Andy um, Barber, his name is. There you go. Andy T Barber on Twitter, give him a follow. So that's kind of in between a couple of our existing Bar- Andy Barker and Andy Barden. <laughs> so I'm starting, starting to worry if we're just not taking over the, the Andy B's. That's maybe our yeah. first demographic. I'll are are you doing like <laughs> a phone book kind of advertising? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he said, so anyway, yeah, this is the answer to Langers. Snade is at 84.1% so far this season, 90 goals kit, mm. um, 84.1% success rate. Both Jordan Lilly and Thomas Bosk are fairly regular goal kickers this year that are outdoing him. Jordan Lilly has kicked 27 successful goals. Um, his percentage is 84.4. Thomas Bosk has kicked 13. Uh, so I looked at everyone who picked who kicked basically double figures. Mm-hmm. Um, Thomas Bosk is at 86.7%. So I, you know you'd question why Catalan are sticking with Pat, um, who's one of the worst regular kickers this year. 
percentage wise. Um, from the Super League stats available on their website, because I didn't have full stats on kicking percentages, um, but those numbers go back to 2003. But before 2009, so everyone can go and look, but before 2009, they're a bit unreliable, um, they look a bit to me, because there was loads of players missing that I think should have been in there, and there wasn't enough players to make every single team in Super League have had a regular goal kicker, if mm. you know what I mean. It was a bit weird. But basically, um, many have outkicked Snade in, in that time. So in 2015, just last year, Kevin Sinfield and Luke Walsh were both kicking at over 85% through the season, 105 goals and 46 goals respectively for them. In 2014, while still at Bradford, Luke Gale was at 89.7% with his 35 successful goal kicks. Um, Jamie Ellis actually had 10 of 10 for a 100% record uh, that year, but obviously he only had 10 goal kicks. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't know much about the percentage skew on that. Four players were better in 2013 as well, which included Brough and Sinfield with 84.7% and 100, uh, 144 goals for Brough, 86.1% 99 goals for Sinfield. Gareth O'Brien has twice had plus 87% kicking success seasons, 2012 and 2013. Um, in 2009, Rob Purdom kicked 39 goals from 42 attempts, so that was at 92.9% accuracy. That's probably the best record I could find for a sort of main goal kicker mm-hmm. during that period of time. So uh, I would say Mark Snade's got some way to go to, to to even be the best, most accurate this year, but he's doing a good job at 84.1%. That's quite high. Yeah, and in terms of the amount of goals he's attempted this year as well, that is. You know, that percentage is based on a higher number of attempted goal kicks from people like Jordan Lilly and Thomas Basque as well, isn't oh, it? Oh, of course, yeah. Jordan so, Lilly's only had about 30 kicks at goal, yeah. You need to keep that in your thoughts as well. But uh, cheers, Larry. That's always uh, always good to get a stats query in. I bet you enjoyed that one on, on the choir, didn't you, Mark? D- yeah, it didn't take long, that one. Good stuff. Right, that's uh, feedback and shout-outs taken care of. Let's take a look now at news from around the world of rugby league. Okay, so to news then from around the world of Rugby League, and we'll start in St. Helens by way of Canberra. Now, when I read this one on Twitter the other morning, I thought I was going to get rickrolled when I clicked on the story, but St. Helens centre Jordan Turner will move to the Australian National Rugby League side Canberra Raiders on a two-year deal for next season. The 27-year-old joined Saints from Hull in 2013 after he came through the youth ranks with Salford Red Devils. He has scored 200 points in over 100 outings at Lantry Park and has won the grand final in 2004. John Turner will link up with England duo Elliot Whitehead and Josh Hobson at Canberra, uh, in addition to former St Helens teammate Sia Soliola. So, this one re- raised more than an eyebrow for me um, when I was reading about him. Like, I just don't see him. Like, I know that when they've, you know, some of the players that they brought down there, like Whitehead and Soliola and Hodgson, is kind of almost, from what I was reading and from my understanding, was based on kind of info that uh, Ricky Stewart was getting from Nathan Brown about English players that might be good and could come in and do a job. Do you think Nathan Brown's after stitching him up now? Or or, uh, or, or do you actually think that Turner can go and, and, and do a job? I, honestly, Nathan Brown maybe I got the me- best out of Jordan Turner. He, well, he, yeah. he, played, he played him in both the centre positions regularly before mm. he had to switch him into the middle, either at loose forward or in the half or whatever with all the injuries he had that year when they won the grand final. But genuinely when he's had consistent runs in the centres at Hull FC and at, at St Helens mm. he shows the ability that the play, the promising player at Salford had and I think it's not a terrible sign and I think he can be consistent and a, and a solid performer and yeah. he has got a little bit of ability I think in, it, there's a lot of learning in him to make him to make him a consistent NRL performer yeah. but I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility I don't think he's as terrible a player as he ends up looking a lot of the times in the Saints side. Possibly. I mean, he loses his utility value because he won't be utilising the halves you wouldn't have thought at Canberra, but in terms of a... You know, as in a, an emergency. In an emergency, he can do a job, but also... Or in origin time, if Blake Austin finally starts getting picked for you would, South Wales. You would imagine, though, that primarily he'll be, he'll be getting utilised in the centres, and actually that he's not probably costing them a lot of cap space. So if he, if he comes off, he's a terrific investment for them. Exactly, and you have to think they're going to have to up deals for Hodgson, for Austin, for Whiten, for players like that. Yeah, true. Which means you need to find your spec. And is a player like Joe Lilly a performing high enough standard for them to to not be 
mm. pushed out. Croker on the other side, yeah, you'd say almost certainly not yeah. going to lose his position as mm-hmm. the, so one of the leaders of that squad. Yeah. Um, tears and all. But <laughs> I, you really don't like Jared Croker, do you? No, it's a, you've it's always a twirl a, gag, isn't it? About him crying. I know, but you've always had a bit of a. Have I? Yeah, I remember talking about him years ago and you sort of not liking his face a little bit. Yeah, like, he has got a whiny face. <laughs> but <laughs> See, like, Joey Lay Lewis, I think, isn't necessarily performing to that, that higher standard that mm. often enough that Jordan Turner, with a bit of consistency in him and some yeah. good quality coaching, yeah. whether he'll get that. I mean, look, good luck to him, do you know what I mean? Because he's another, he, he, it's not, it can't be bad for the English game, another English player going and, and yeah. having that, ben, you know, that benefit. And look, when Josh Hodgson went down there, you know, he didn't go down there as, you know, the best hooker in the game. And he's arguably one of the, you know, he's arguably England's top two hookers now. There you so go. it certainly couldn't do him any, it might not do him any harm. Uh, we did get some feedback on this one, though. Who got in touch? Uh, Alan Cale, he, at Shoddy and Mungo, he said, Turner is an odd one. They have two good centres that he won't replace. Squad depth, perhaps. Good luck to him, though. Mm-hmm. Tim Griffiths, he got in touch. He said, is Canberra becoming the Exiles Club that Dr. Kooky Cash wanted after all? Good luck to him. Hopefully he'll be played in the centre. Absolutely. OK, uh, Warrington winger Gene Ormsby has joined Super League rivals Huddersfield Giants with immediate effect. Ormsby had already agreed to join the Giants for 2017, having made two appearances during a one-month loan spell with the club in April. The 23-year-old scored 29 tries in 42 games for Warrington, but has only played in five matches so far this season. I wanted to get game time, so it's good for my career to be here, he told the Huddersfield Club website. But yeah, that's an overwhelming statement of intent, isn't it? Oh, I wanted a bit of game time, so I mean, is that the only quote you could find on it? Maybe there's more somewhere knocking about. That was the quote that came up on the uh, on the articles I, I came I have, across to from, copy and paste. Listen, if there was a Warrington winger whose attitude I was going to question, it wouldn't necessarily be Gene Ormsby's first of all. So you know, let's give him a chance and see. Maybe he's just unhappy at Warrington and he's full, you know frustrated at falling down the pecking order behind the likes of uh, six figure Tom Lynham and, and I'm just and thinking it's, like it, it, it's not like it's not it's, enthusiastic, no, is it? Not well, like then you've got to think in a week where there was a lot of transition going on at Huddersfield. Maybe this sort of you know, went under the radar a little bit with all the stuff True. that they were doing about Rick Stone. Witness Vikings have signed centre Tom Armstrong from Championship leaders Lee Centurions for the 2017 season. Armstrong, who's 26, has agreed a two-year deal with the Vikings, oddly enough. He began his career at St Helens and scored 16 tries in 29 games before stepping down from full-time rugby league in 2011 to complete a Masters in Petroleum Engineering. Uh, Tom has some great qualities to offer, great speed, durability, and will add to the competition for places within the squad, said Widness head coach Dennis Betts. The St. St. Helens born three quarter, who can also play in the back row, has been a long time target for Betts, who tried to sign him from the Red V earlier in his career. Armstrong added when he expressed an interest this time he did so with a lot of knowledge of my game and style of play which instilled me with real confidence in making the transition back into Super League with the Vikings this is a good signing for me I think this is money well spent yeah he's a, he's a, he's a high caliber performer I'd say and yeah. he can probably fit in on both sides if he needs to I always love the petroleum engineering line on this, on this yeah, lad it just he, he tried his, out every time he had himself switched on though to go yeah. away and disappear and whilst he was doing that he managed to win a few trophies will he well and, he and, was... and Sheffield before that that's true, of course. Yeah. yeah. No, every credit to him. I think, uh, and it's nice to see a lad. He was in Sheffield at that pomp as well, wasn't he? That is true. It's nice to see a lad who's got his career away from rugby. He's got his career sorted now. That's it's great to see that, isn't it? He's going to play rugby league for a bit, and then if he ever has to fall back on it, he's got a degree in what I imagine is quite a specific field. And he's a, he's a decent, decent player as well, um, and I think he, he could go well making the step up. He probably would have made the step back into Super League sooner if he wasn't. Mm. needing to be on a part-time basis when he was doing all his yeah. uh, studies. There you go. Okay, uh, we did get some feedback on this one as well, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, Paul Lewis got in touch, witness fan, of course. He said, not seen much of him, but it must be good if we've given him a rare two-year contract. Yeah, absolutely. Just hope he's okay having a winger who is never where he should be in our van. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently a few clubs were after him, but his dad is a witness fan, so probably advised not so subtly who to join. Every credit. Wakefield forward Chris Anakin will miss the next three months with an injury sustained from Sean O'Loughlin's challenge on him last Friday evening. Anakin will be sidelined for the rest of the CE's season with a knee complaint. According to the Yorkshire Post, Anakin picked up the injury as he collapsed from the high shot O'Loughlin was given a one-game ban for. Yeah, so obviously the knee injury was a sort of freak 
um, kind of consequence yeah. of, the, of the 